This video covers nucleophilic aromatic substitution and addition elimination. For nucleophilic aromatic substitution, you can replace a good leaving group with a nucleophile if the ring has a powerful electron withdrawing group, typically nitro groups, and the leaving group must be ortho or para to the electron withdrawing group. If we take, for example, para-nitrobenzene and treat it with sodium hydroxide at 70 degrees C and then followed by water or acidic water, then we get nitrohydroxybenzene or nitrophenol. This does not happen when we take the meta-substituted product, but when we get to the ortho-substituted product, again, we can accomplish the replacement of bromine with a hydroxy group. This is called SNAR, um, that's the abbreviation for nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And in this reaction, we first have a hydroxy group attacking the carbon containing a leaving group, and we form an anion at the carbon next to the leaving group. That then ejects chloride as a good leaving group. And because we are in basic conditions, then we're in an equilibrium between phenoxide and, and phenol, and it prefers phenoxide, and that's why we need to have this acidic workup to get to our neutral phenol. This intermediate complex is called the Meisenheimer complex, and it's resonance stabilized, as you can see from this resonance hybrid. There, the nitro group is happy to accept some of that negative charge and delocalize it um, across the benzene ring and the nitro group. The second reaction we're going to cover is addition elim or elimination addition. And here we're taking either um, an alkyl halide, or sorry, a, an aryl halide with either sodium hydroxide or sodium amide and replacing the chlorine, chloride with hydroxide or with an amine. This mechanism isn't SNAR, and you can tell from the outcome of this reaction. When you have paramethylchlorobenzene and treat it with sodium amide and ammonia and then treat it with water, what you see is that the products are both para and meta to the methyl group. And that is not consistent with the SNAR mechanism. If we were in the SNAR mechanism, then we would only get this product. But since we get both, we know that the mechanism is different. So what is it? Here we have ammonia as our strong base, removing a proton from the position next to the leaving group. And this leaving group departs creating a benzyne intermediate. So that is three bonds there, two pi bonds and a sigma bond. This is a very strained, very reactive intermediate, and it reacts with another equivalent of sodium amide to form this um, ionic species, this anion. This anion then attacks a molecule of sodium amide to become neutral. But the benzyne didn't have to react at that position. It could have reacted at the position meta to the methyl group, and that would install the, the amino group meta to the methyl group um, leading to the meta-substituted product. So that's how you can get to both the para and the meta-substituted product is because we're going through this benzyne intermediate and the amine or the amide anion can attack either one of those carbons. So I want to do a practice where you draw both products of this reaction. So I want you to pause your video and see if you can get both products of this reaction. So that means that there are two. We know with sodium amide that we can get 
two benzynes We also know that our amide anion can attack either one of these positions. We know that if it attacks the green position, we're going to get the same, the same answer. Now what happens if we attack the yellow positions? I'll draw this one in black. So here we would get to this product and here we would get to this product and then what is it what happens it turns out that these are the same. So the two products of this reaction are the blue one and then the black ones, which are the same as each other. Next, I want you to do a practice on proposing a synthesis. So I want you to pause your video and work out the synthesis. And before you pause it, let me tell you that it is um, one, two, three, four, five, five steps. So we only know how to install an oxygen atom using uh, one chemistry, which is our, uh, our substitution nucleophilic aromatic, our SNAR reaction. So at some point, we are going to have to replace Hold on. We're going to have to replace a halogen with a hydroxy group. And we know that we need to have a strong electron withdrawing group to do that. So we need to have our nitro group and we're going to position it para to the bromine because we can see in the product that we've got an amine here. So at some point we're going to convert that nitro group into an amine. So this is how we install our oxygen. Now we want to convert our molecule into an ether. And we want to do it before we convert the nitro group into an amine because um, amine groups are acidic and if we treat our amine with sodium hydroxide, we're going to get alkylation of that amine as well. And then for our final step, we want to do a reduction We're going to use zinc hydrochloric acid followed by sodium hydroxide. Now how did we get to this bromo nitrobenzene? Well, that's not very hard. We just brominate benzene. And then use nitric acid with sulfuric acid to install the nitro group. For the last slide, I wanted to give you a summary of how do you know what mechanism is in action. We have three different mechanisms to consider when we are dealing with aromatic rings. We have electrophilic aromatic substitution, 
nucleophilic aromatic substitution, addition elimination. In electrophilic aromatic substitution, the key thing is that we're going through this arenium intermediate, and this requires for the benzene ring to attack a nucleophile, or attack, sorry, to attack an electrophile, and that means we have to have a really good electrophile in solution. So we're looking for species that want to accept electrons very much. When we are considering nucleophilic aromatic substitution, then we need to form this complex, um, this Meisenheimer, com Meisenheimer complex. And to do that, we need to have a strong base a good leaving group, and an electron withdrawing group. We need all three of these for this reaction to occur. So that's one of our clues is that the conditions are basic. Another clue is that we've got an electron withdrawing group. And finally, we've got to have that leaving group to kick off. In addition elimination, we also have a good leaving group and we have a strong base, but now we don't have an electron withdrawing group, and that's why we end up going through our benzene intermediate, which is missing its pi bonds. There we go. So in summary, you want to look at the, the intermediate that you're going to form, and you know which intermediate you're going to form if you identify whether you've got a leaving group, you've got a substituent effect, for example, are there electron withdrawing groups, and what is the nature of your reagents. The nature of your reagents is going to really clue you into electrophilic aromatic substitution containing Bronsted or Lewis acids, and then the nucleophilic or basic conditions are going to lead you to nucleophilic aromatic substitution or addition elimination chemistry, and whichever one happens depends on whether you've got that electron withdrawing nitro group or not.